ready to engage. Oh, you're, you're clear. Hey, folks. Welcome to the 21. I didn't like that one. I didn't like, can we start over? No, we can't. No. Okay. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to the, I'll just keep going and I'll, no, I won't even edit it in. I'm going to let you experience Feel the pain. The rawness. Yeah. Cause this is what a live <laughs> show would be like. Uh, we wouldn't be able to screw This used to be a live show. This was a live show for a number of years. Uh, and actually a lot of you were tweeting. Did I finish what I was saying? Welcome to 21 gun podcast. I'm your host, Kevin. Sullivan. And to my right here is uh, Frank Easterling. Um, yeah, we did a, a live show. A lot of people are tweeting, can you do a live show? Uh, I'd like to. I'm working with uh, E-Rock on it. We're trying to figure out a way to make it work. I think the whole reason is uh, phone calls. I want to take phone calls because right now I'm just interacting with people on Twitter and it doesn't usually, <laughs> doesn't go as well <laughs> as I would like. I think we're friends. I'm like, I'm not a boomer, but I act like one. And I'm like, oh, and then I realized like, as I'm chatting with someone that they're actually pissed at me and then they block me. Yeah. I don't know. People are sensitive. And, Maybe it's, always I'm sensitive. Right, and it's always right before you get your good one liner in. Yeah. When they block you, it's like, oh man, I, I didn't get a chance to say this. <laughs> well, we have a, actually where I think we ironed out the tech issues uh, and it, it, it's actually not here today. Jeremy, we got, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Jeremy, Jeremy's very sensitive. He's not kidding. Jeremy. People would think they don't really like, he's like, hey, 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 Marine. Hey, hey. I try to do that. That's what you Marines do. Is it, uh, is it? Very sensitive guy. So I don't want to, I'm kidding, Jeremy. It's just a joke. Uh, Jeremy's not here. So we're going to, we're going to try to do everything here, which is why our computers are prominent up here. And we might be distracted a little bit. Last week I was very distracted because, um, I mean, this is the product, right? The show is yeah. the product and we don't have the fancy booth like they have uh, with Garrett and Drew in there. Uh -oh. um, I would love that. Yeah, can you guys fly down here? I'll pay, pay you for once a week. You're going to have them live in this room? Yeah, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Lock them in my closet. But we can't, we can't like troubleshooting is literally as we're doing the show. Yep. And uh, there's been a couple things going on, but I think today everything looks like it's running smooth. So don't maybe don't maybe it, Jeremy man. is fired. I mean, I, I think our audio seems to be working. Uh, yeah, our yeah. video seems to be working. We have yeah. different, different multiple angles yeah. uh, that we can use. And yeah. we even had this little wide shot, which I thought was artistic because we can see the, Never mind. We have a great show for you guys tonight. <laughs> the theme of the show is going to be lies. I found that uh, a lot of lies are coming to the forefront. Um, oh, yeah. The COVID vaccine lie, um, the, the COVID lab leak lie, uh, January 6th lie. I had a few other lies that we were going to go over. Um, but that's the, that's the theme of the show. Uh, but before that, we actually have uh, Alex Rosen coming on. I think that's his name because if you look online, he's got like a bunch of different aliases. It's uh, Gordon Flowers, Chet... Chet, uh, I have it written down somewhere, but I can't, Chet something, Chet McGillicuddy. <laughs> Chet McGillicuddy. <laughs> I just made that up, but that's a good one. He can take that. Can Where did I write one. it here in my notes? Um, but he heads up uh, the Predator Poachers, which is an awesome organization. As a dad of a daughter and a dad of two daughters, yep. uh, the idea, my kids are young. His kids probably carry weapons at this point. They're old enough. They, they actually do. Good for them. Uh, but they like edged weapons because they're weird. Ah, yes, I could see so. that. You do have a family of anime uh, yes. sword swinging people. Yes, I do. Uh, which I don't know. I think I would rather go up against a gun than a sword in a close quarter situation. Um, I don't want to be sliced up. That freaks me out. When people, <laughs> you see videos of people pull knives in fights and they start swinging them around. And I'm like, God, if you get caught with that, it's, that's just uh, a mess you don't want to deal with. Nope. Uh, a gun, believe it or not, when someone shoots at you, they're, take a laser pointer and like quickly bring it out in front of you and hit the button and see where it goes. And I guarantee you, it's not going to be anywhere near, well, it might be close, but anywhere near you where you intended, like that doorknob over there. It wouldn't work. Do I have a laser pointer? We could try it. No, I don't. No. I do have one. I was playing with my dog with it, but I don't know where it is. Um, <laughs> but that's what, a, that's what a pistol is, right? You're pulling that thing out, your adrenaline's going and you're shooting. And wherever that barrel is aimed at, the second you pull that trigger, that's where that, yep. that bullet's going. Sometimes people get a hell of a shot. Did you see that? I think Anthony played it on his show. Um, some dude decided that he was going to rob a gun store. And this dude one shot him one. What do you call that? One tapped him. Uh, and this guy went lights out. And it's funny. Anthony brought up the same thing that I noticed. Um, the guy goes down, his guns go flying 
And the, the video is like five minutes long. And if you do the fast forward, the scrubbing, the dude hits the ground and you don't see any like, like twitch or move or any, he's done. Lights oh, out, yeah. dead. It was a great shot. So yeah, that can happen. But for the most part, uh, it's wherever you're pointing at the moment that you want to shoot someone. And um, how the hell did we get into this conversation? Ah, well, we're talking well, swords because yes. your family does swords. Um, nice. So yeah, I'm sorry. It was Alex Rosen. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what he does is he sets up um, uh, uh, stings with these predators that um, lure young children. And dude, and we'll get it. I don't want to get too much into it because it's a great conversation. But uh, some of these scumbags are going after like eight and nine year olds. They're trying to lure them to like their work or whatever. And um, and the way he talks with them, he gets them to just open up and basically spill the beans on camera, <laughs> sometimes live. I've never seen it live, but um, it might be one of the other guys that actually live streams it. But maybe he does. I don't know. I'll ask him about it. But uh, yeah, these dudes like admit to having infant porn, toddler porn. Like what? What kind of human are you? Like and, and you're not. You're first not. First of all, you're not a human. There's a general thing where I, th I and I, we brought this up before, where in the past, if you harm children, all bets are off. Yep. Like you are subhuman. You could you could literally be doused with a barrel full of acid in front of me, and I would be like, oh, ooh, don't get it on my shoes, and then I would go eat there. <laughs> I have no time or room for you, None. which I don't know how he does it, uh, to be honest with you, because uh, uh, I, I just couldn't. And I'm sure people bring that up to him a lot. You know, the whole thing with, with police, you know, I couldn't do that job because I would want to freaking kill these people that hurt kids. And it's true. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Do you ever want to be a cop growing up? I thought about it. And then I realized that I would probably not be a very honest cop. I'm just being real. Only because it would sicken me. Yeah. To like, you know, you're like dealing you, with this guy and you're like, you pull him over and he's got like, and this low life scum's got like 10 grand on him from like peddling poison in the neighborhood. And you know, he's not going to go away for a long time and this money's going to, it's just like, okay, yeah, perp had a hundred bucks on this person. <laughs> you know? I, I think about that a lot. I consider myself a moral person, but if you are um, busting a drug house, you're right. And there's a million dollars in cash. And you've been doing this job for say 20 years at this point and people are just shitting on you every it's day. just you got ptsd you got your pension maybe coming up yep. uh and you look and you're like these sons of bitches are they gonna miss a hundred thousand dollars and then it comes to, to karma right yep. you're not stealing from an old lady you're stealing from a criminal you're yep. stealing from a dude that most likely has killed people with their product yeah so what what moral I don't know. That's a tricky thing. We should have a cop come on and, and talk about it's, that. It's it's diff it's weird because I look at it like that way, and people are like, oh well, you know, what about the prison system? I'm like, you don't never you don't want me to be the warden because I'll put you like in a like everyone's get everyone gets a plastic spork, a Zippo, <laughs> and there's a cow in a field, and it's like go for it, criminals. I um <laughs> when I was a, a medical student, I had to work at Butner State Prison, so it's a federal prison. It, Worst nightmare on the face of the earth. Like it takes, it took me 45 minutes to get in through the gates. Like you had to go in, they went through your bags. You had to, you know, take your belt off and all that stuff. Then you get to the other side, you get everything back. Every door was like constantly 10 feet of walking. And then the, the instructor who was with me, they were the, who are the dudes that dress like they're in the Navy, but they're doctors, medical corps. The one that, um, um the Corbin tranny does, or, uh, 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 the Le Dick Levine. Dick Levine, they're called the medical corps, I think. I could have it wrong. The hospital corps, Amer medical. They dress like they're Navy and they have Navy, you know, you know who yeah. I'm talking about, Admiral Levine, yeah. the obese that, dude that, that guy. cut his dick off. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's people like that and they would walk me like 10 feet and then we'd have to go through a door. And then they'd put me in a room, they'd be like, okay, I want you to examine this patient. And then they would lock the door. I didn't like it. I didn't like being locked in all these places. <laughs> and then this, this uh, PA, she was like the head PA there. She comes up and she's like, hey, I want to take you over to the urgent care wing or whatever it is. Like if people stub their toes, we'll check them out. I'm like, all right, cool, let's do that. And she's like a five foot tall, 98 pound little lady. And she walks me through the yard. And it's just me. I got a, a tie on. I'm obviously... <laughs> I'm not a big dude. I mean, six three, but whatever. Uh, 
I'm not. Not six not, three. Not quite six feet. Not six feet. Not quite six. <laughs> not quite five ten. Not quite. <laughs> Could be if I wear shoes. Um, so she walks me across, and it's like just federal, federal prisoners, and all these federal prisoners. Most of the ones that were there was kind of cool. They were like ex mobsters. Um, uh, who else? Do we see? A lot of drug guys. Some porn king guy. Uh, Madoff, Bernie Madoff was there, but there was also there was also a lot of drug dealers and, and stuff like that. But it was creepy. No, never could never do that. Um, but do you know what I could do? What could you do? Is drink a cup of coffee. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's show is sponsored by Twenty Two Sierra Coffee. Ladies and gentlemen, it is almost St. Patrick's Day. You still have time, mind you. Uh, I know a lot of you are drunkards and you would rather start your morning off with some green beer. But maybe be responsible this year and start off with some Irish cream coffee from 22 Sierra. There's no alcohol in it, but you'd be surprised. You would think there is because of that warm, smooth, delicious <laughs> taste as it trickles down your throat. See, uh, I read a thing that says if you're going to sell something, sex sells. So if I start talking sexual into the phone, phone uh, microphone, you guys will want to buy it even more. So wrap your lips around it. I'm just kidding. Of course, uh, I'm starting to gross myself out. Um, so yes, or the day after, maybe you drank a little too much on St. Patrick's Day and uh, you need a little hair of the dog. Here you go. Have an Irish cream. And if you don't like flavored coffees, very light flavored, by the way, we don't do heavy on the flavors. Uh, we have all sorts of roasts. That, do I have bags here? I do have bags somewhere, but you know what? Don't worry about it. We have dark roasts. We have medium roasts. We even have a light roast. It's called, uh, what's it called? This is it. Pull up the coffees. <laughs> I have a bad memory. I should know. Like, click here. Ah, there we go. And then go coffee. Coffee bags. Look at that. We got Going Dark, obviously our dark roast. We've got Ambush. Keep scrolling down. That's our espresso roast, by the way. Very good. There it is. First light. That's our that's our light roast. And let me tell you, we go light. So uh, if that's the kind of thing you like, the, the breakfast blend is kind of light, too. Uh, my favorite is, scroll down a little bit more is jump master but i think that's on our signature blends if you head over to the signature blends um the proceeds from those bags go to help uh veteran oh and look our decaf it's ammunition um go to click up on the top again we got to get alex on i realize i'm just blabbing here <laughs> uh go to uh yeah well coffee oh coffee saves lives right there if you go to our coffee saves lives collection that's where uh, we donate to these organizations. We've got Dark Humor, which is Irreverent, irreverent Warriors. Jump Master, which is uh, the Round Canopy Parachuting Team. I might be down, I think I told you a couple weeks ago, I might yep, be parachuting with them. There. Uh, I think it's kind of cool. I'm old and to be able to tell people that I skydive, which it's not really, but who's gonna who's gonna call me out? If I'm jumping out of an airplane <laughs> with a freaking static line, but if I'm jumping out, I mean, come on. Does it, does it make, if you're jumping at 1200 feet with a static line, do you survive more if your parachute doesn't open? I think not. Depends. Uh, for the fans of 21 Gun, and especially the fans of Compound Media, I have a special deal for you guys. Order today. Get your um, your Irish cream roast. Uh, you actually can get any anything. Anything. T-shirts, hats, whatever you want to get. Tumblers. 20% uh, off for you guys. Who is calling me? Do, do these people... I should answer and be like, do you know I do a show? <laughs> No, they don't because we don't go live. Um, uh, Compound 20. Use Compound 20 at checkout. You'll get 20% off that first order. You won't be disappointed. I guarantee you. Oh, maybe that's my new catchphrase. <laughs> nope. Nope. Let's bring on. Hold on. Let me make sure we have anything else before I forget. Uh, live show. We're not going to do that. Okay. Yeah. Let's bring on Mr. Rose. Mr. McGillicuddy. <laughs> <laughs> Chet McGillicuddy in the How's who's going? How's going? Hey, <laughs> what's up? What is it? What was the Chet one that I, I messed up? So basically my real name is Alex Rosen. Um, my alias I give the Predators is uh, Gordon Flowers. And at one time I used the name Chet Goldstein as a troll. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The uh, What's funny is the first time I saw you guys, um, what's really funny is actually uh, about Gosh, now it must have been eight years ago. My niece came to stay with us for like a month. And actually, she stayed in this room. This used to be a, a bedroom. Uh, boy, that just, that gave out too much information about how <laughs> low budget we are. <laughs> I mean, in this studio downtown on the fifth floor of of this building. Um, she, she would go into a room and then be on uh, uh, YouTube. And at that time, I wouldn't, I never considered that that's what people do. They sit and look at YouTube. Now I do it all the time. Um, 
long story to tell you that I was just flipping through YouTube and I saw you guys, I don't know when you started, but you were young. I feel like you guys were a bunch of, my, my impression was you were a bunch of high school dudes that were going out and, and pulling stings on these predators at, at Walmart. Am I, am I close? Is that what happened? Yeah. So we were like the age of freshmen in college. Like when we started doing this, we we're 19 years old and I'm 22 now, but you know, I get this hairline, all these stress marks from, you know, seeing a lot of dick pics when I'm a straight wall. <laughs> so it happens. Nice. Uh, so it, it was only three years ago then. Um, yeah, like close to four years ago, like May, 2019. Okay. Where did you like come up with that idea? Cause it's that when you look at it, of course, uh, there's a bunch of, there's uh, Colorado Ped Patrol. I'm trying to think there's a bunch of others and, and right. you can't help, but look at it and be like, God, I would love to do something like that. And then my analytical mind goes, Holy shit. There's so many moving parts to that, right? You got to first lure them in. You got to, uh, uh, get the the logs. You got to record. You got to do all this stuff. Like, how did you come up with that? Just on your own trial and error, or did you, you know, follow someone else's recipe? Well, basically, I've always wanted to be a police officer, um, and I couldn't do that at 19 years old. I, I played a uh, college football my freshman year of college at Texas Southern, um, and basically, uh, after the school year, uh, we had like three weeks off from before summer workouts. And I basically, my whole routine was wake up at 5 a.m., go to sleep at 10 p.m. And I Oof. threw that all out the window those next three weeks. Um, I, I just started staying up late, eating ice cream and watching these types of videos. Like I got into these and I've seen like Chris Hansen previously, like, you know, as a teenager or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, I really started getting into these videos specifically. I was like, wait, I, oh, I really like this stuff. And I decided to go try it myself because I couldn't be a cop at 19 years old in Houston. Uh, you got to yeah. be like 21 by the time you graduate from the academy. So I think I was anyway, I was going to do two years of college and go to the academy. But, um, you know, I just wanted to kind of see for myself, like, OK, these videos look kind of exaggerated. Like, I, I didn't doubt they were real or weren't real, but it was more like, OK, how many of these people are really out here? You yeah. know? And I just decided to, and I just made a profile as a fake 15 year old on Grinder and said, okay, this could be interesting. And within 30 minutes, somebody wanted to meet and I was like, holy crap. And then we just kind of kept doing it. Like it was just so easy to get them to go after an underage kid, or I, I should rephrase that. They don't, it's not getting them to go after an underage kid. They just do it. And, you know, as the years went on, we started like posing lower and lower in ages. And at this point we're traveling the country. We have an arrest in 42 different States Nice. and convictions nice. in like 20 and you know more more coming they just you know court dates and, sh and uh, stuff like that but um now we're catching people like like you mentioned earlier like into infant porn toddler porn just huge freaking child molesters you know yeah started, started at basically the horny 20 year olds that make the worst mistake of their life to just like lifetime sexual abusers yeah yeah there's something about um i remember when chris hansen first started doing the show there's something about I don't know that that voyeur being in the room when someone when someone's life is just completely fucked like forever like yeah. there there's no you're screwed if you do that you're always the pedo if you do that um and then sometimes too when I watch your vids I'm like you know they they seem so apologetic and you're like oh because I when you do these shows you don't know as the watcher, you don't know the, the, the person's background or anything. And you're like, mm -hmm. man, I kind of feel bad for this guy. And then you start reading his shit and he's like graphically, um, talking about sex with someone they think is 10 years old and showing their dicks and doing whatever. And then you're like, oh no, this is a scumbag and they need to not, not ever be on the street ever. Do, do these guys you catch, um, there's not a lot of, at least maybe I haven't found it, but, uh, follow up. So, uh, are these guys getting the book thrown at them? Are they going to jail for a long time or what happens to them after you? Ask them? Absolutely. Um, you know, when they have their day in court, which um, most recently took, well, no, actually I was in court uh, two days ago in Pennsylvania. Um, it, it was declared a mistrial because the predator spurred out. Like he fired his whole legal team, like even his assigned counsel, he fired them and basically just threw a tantrum in court. And something happened with the jury to where I don't know exactly, it became a mistrial. However, it's gonna be rescheduled for May and, and or June, but he's he's a sex offender and he's facing 40 years and the evidence Good. against him is so overwhelming. So it's not like when the mistrial happens, he like goes home and has some time to like, you know, escape. He just goes right back to jail. And then, um, so that was a sixth. So then five days before that, I was in Virginia um, for another trial. And this guy, um, 
he got found guilty on 36 out of 52 counts, and he's getting sentenced to at least 130 years um, nice. when anything happens in May. And that guy's in Fredericksburg, Virginia. His name's Matthew Erickson. Oh, you were there. You were there just last week. I think that's when yeah. I was texting. Yeah, you that's that's, that. that's why I couldn't be on. I mean, I guess it's a good reason not to be like it's a good reason uh, that I couldn't Absolutely. be on. But yeah. So um, the other thing, too, I think a lot of is, you know, you let's say you set up one sting in one tiny corner of the United States um, mm -hmm. and then you can you can go. Like I said, there's so many different channels like this, which is good. And they're doing little corners and they're picking people up like so easy so it makes me think like in this little town clayton north carolina like tonight someone in this town of i don't know it's probably twenty five thousand people is is uh predatoring how do you say that is potent <laughs> is going after a little kid somewhere like it's happening it's definitely happening Absolutely. so do you feel like do you feel compelled that you know i gotta work i gotta work because when you do take one of these guys off the street you are potentially saving a life because these kids who are molested they go through hell and then you see a lot of um uh a lot of these kids who are molested end up becoming molesters when they're older so you start the spiral and you're stopping that so yeah do you feel compelled to just get out there and work oh absolutely um and yeah a lot of them have been abused i'd say it's probably 50 50 with who we catch if i ask them depending on how the interview goes and i'm not saying it's an excuse to go do absolutely not an excuse to go do it. But, you know, I'd be lying if I said they weren't more likely to do it when they've been abused. I mean, it's not hard to see the pattern that it is a cycle and stopping that cycle is I think very important because, you know, it's the same way they, they don't, uh, I, I, I don't think pedos reproduce too much. They recruit and I think they do it by touching little kids. And of course, some people are just born very sick and, it sucks, but no matter what the reason is, if they're going after a little kid, it doesn't it doesn't matter the motive. They need to be um, at the very least locked up. But um, yeah, I, I I can't stop working. Like I just got home from uh, court yesterday. Like we flew, you know, court was on the sixth, so I, I got home yesterday. And um, the day before court, I mean, we got somebody arrested in New Jersey who wanted who invited who we thought was an eleven year old girl over to worship her feet and just molest her. Jesus. And yeah, and basically we, we we got done in New Jersey like at 1 a.m. on the 6th and I drove all night to get to court by 8 by 8 a.m. Um, <clears throat> in Pennsylvania. And I, I only get I only ended up getting like two hours of sleep in my car. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't stop doing this. Like if there's somebody ready to go meet, I'm ready to go do it. And like like we just got home and in two days I'm going to be in North Dakota. So uh, I'm wow. ready. Jeez. Yeah. Have you figured out a way to to uh I guess make a career out of this. I know you guys have. I'm actually. I. I. Uh, last week I joined your locals because I'm like, man, we got to help these guys out. But um, yeah, I mean, if you're if you're if you're traveling around and you're doing stuff like that, how do you pay the bills? How do you how do you cover that? Well, um, people like you uh, first and foremost, and then for a long time, YouTube was actually pretty kind to us. I mean, we've we've lost like seven channels, but um, <laughs> you know, getting getting monetized wasn't wasn't hard on YouTube, but now it is. Um, cause YouTube is just straight up defending, uh, child molesters and there's no, there's no other way to put it. I mean, just today they removed one of our videos from the channel, from one of our channels. And then they also took down another predator catching channel, uh, predator catchers Muncie. I mean, they're taking down everybody. So, I mean, majority of it was, yeah, YouTube, our videos would do very well. Um, we, we would get a ton of views now. Now we still get decent amount of views on YouTube, but like, you know, when you're on your like seventh channel at this point, like it's, it's hard to keep up. But now it's kind of majority like, you know, locals and stuff like that. Like people just saying, hey, I'll pay this much to see the content early or whatever. Like we're kind of turning away from Silicon Valley to fund our mission through ads to just people that actually want pedos to be stopped. Yeah. The other thing, too, uh, which makes it we, we actually went through this uh, ourselves trying to figure out if we're going to put this yeah. uh, on YouTube. And I'm like, it's not worth it. All the, the editing and stuff like that. But when you watch your YouTube videos versus your your locals, um, and locals is a subset, I think of, of rumble, rumble. right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you have to edit everything and it's like, I can kind of figure out what you're saying, but I mean, if you say child porn or, or, or porn, or, I mean, you're editing everything out of there because I assume they, they throw a strike at you or, or whatever. Yeah. Well, I, I just want like, kind of like a beatbox rapping career. That's, that's just why I you know, just, <laughs> that's a producer. but, um, nice. no, yeah. So it's not that they'll take the video down necessarily, but and, you know, this sounds kind of grifty to say, but I mean, whatever. I mean, I get these people arrested. Um, 
you know, it doesn't get monetized if you have all of that in the video. And like, I understand money isn't the uh, pinnacle thing of doing this because we were doing this before we made any money off it. And that definitely wasn't the goal. But um, <clears throat> basically, if I'm traveling to North Dakota to get a predator arrested, um, we do we do need to make money off of it. It's just yeah. that simple. So we do try to get the videos monetized on YouTube. And um, the cool part about Rumble is way less editing if any needs to even go into getting them monetized so i mean hopefully sure. that, that drops off but yeah no that's that's why we have to and of course it is safer too because you know say i make a joke to the predator or something said who knows what they could take down i mean they've removed videos for ridiculous reasons before oh sure um what's funny i'm glad you brought that up because stylistically you know you think that that watching this would be awful right but i find myself watching them all the time because like i said you know, having a little daughter that is going to be growing up. I mean, she's only eight. She's going to be like knee deep in this stuff in the next few years. And it's getting more and more and more prevalent, like just all the amounts of social media and, and their ability to access it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I lost my train of thought because I started thinking about uh, how to protect her. Um, damn it. Uh, damn it. What was I going to say, Frank? I don't know. I can't remember either. <laughs> social media. Uh, Access. social media. Fuck. I hate it when that happens. Watching it has nothing, has nothing to do with me being old, has nothing to do with me being oh, okay. old. Yeah. Uh, but we'll very presidential that. there. <laughs> well, 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 I'm say, actually pissed because I had a good idea. Well, when I you say that. that, you say it like that about being old. So my, so I have a kind of a very based view about the whole deal. Cause I know for me, it's more, I can't, okay. I can't watch it not because you know what it's because for me i get too emotional with it i get too angry mm -hmm. so like sure. if, even with my daughters you know being you know in their 20s i can still see like if somebody were to come after my daughters i know um that's the day that i'm going to prison that's that's just it yeah, that's, yeah. That's, what, yeah, that's what's happening as as the great uh kurt schilling said on our show once uh this is the day my life changes and it's not for the good right so right? <laughs> So, you know, further on, it's like, so, so if I know, or if I see someone going after a kid again, that's the day I'm going to prison. Like I'm not going to leave it in the hands of, you know, the liberal court system. That's like more and more, you know, catering, you know, you know, to these disgusting, you know, creeps. Like it's, I, I, cause I see this disgusting shift of people that's literally trying to normalize the behavior that you're trying to stop. Yeah. Yeah, they really are. So, and it's, to me, it's, it, that's to say it's immoral, to say it's disgusting. Those words don't even come close to how depraved any and all of this is. You know, that's like, a good point um, because, you know, we've been decoying for, you know, throwing up these fake profiles on social media. That's how we do it. By the way, we throw up a fake profile of either a picture of an adult from when they were a kid and or we use face app so for example it could make any of us three look like kids oh that's oh cool God. i was wondering how you did that like because yeah. i would never let my daughter be an you know yeah. use her pitch or anything like that okay yeah so um basically so that's how they find us yada 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 so we've been doing that for since 2019 um and so, you know, we've been talking to predators for this long, only in the past year, like 2022, have the predators started, and I'm not saying all of them do, most of them don't, but only have the predators started using the term like, hey, are you a map or are you an, or, or I'm uh, sorry, you know what a map is? Or are you an AAM, which is an adult attracted minor? And there's pages on Instagram. Um, and we found one of the predators from this page, or we saw following it. One of the two, we, we catch so many, I don't know, but <laughs> he was following this page called map and AAM. So map and adult minor attracted person and adult attracted minor. And only in the past year has that term been started. Like only have, only have they been using that term with our decoys and it's been, hasn't been a lot, but it's been too many to count. If you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you also bust a lot, not a bust, but I guess you get a lot of these guys who are on telegram, which I had no idea that that's what they were doing. Cause I have telegram, but I like follow yeah. Tucker Carlson and yeah. stuff. Like, I didn't know there was so much child porn on it because I don't remember, I haven't used it in a while, but I think it's like a, it's like a, almost like a messaging service, but you can message a group of friends, right? Have, so like, you have a group. That's yeah. So I thing. follow like Gavin McInnes and when he puts something out, he sends it to his group and it's only that group that can see it. But yeah, a lot of them tell you they're like, Oh yeah. And that's the other thing too. Um, that's brazen. That's the thing that I can't get over is that the brazen oh, sure. nature of all, like right now he's yeah. given away, you know, the secret sauce he's giving yeah, away still the catching. entire like <laughs> program. Like, Hey, this is exactly how we're catching you. And tomorrow he'll catch somebody. 
even though he's giving away the recipe. I, like, I, I don't. <laughs> I remembered what I was going to say. By the way, is uh, the show as as disgusting and vile these people are? Uh, stylistically, you make it entertaining. Um, you do a good job with that, right? Because uh, your subtle jokes, and you even like almost trademarked. You bring all their. Um, uh, messages like when you print them off in a paper bag, yeah. like you have this stylistic thing that uh, <laughs> it's, it's just enjoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and your little jokes. Actually, pull up link. Uh, I think it's link to shit. Hold on. Uh, Do people no, comment no. about the paper bag saying like, "Oh, you're, are you too cheap to get a binder?" Like, first of all, yes, but second of all, the paper <laughs> bag is just it's signature at this point. I have yeah. to. Yeah, can't I mean, get rid of it. Binders are so gay. It's so fun. It's so funny. Bring up uh, uh, link three. It's link three, and uh, yeah. let's watch this one here real quick. So this one, uh, as Frank uh, pulls it up, this was right here that. in, in it's fine. This was right here in North Carolina, Onslow. You were probably like an hour and a half from where we are right now, Onslow County. And um, uh, where is it? You want to put it? It's here. I know, but you want to put it where the, the link was. Um, okay, so that was here. It was 636. What if you reload it? Reload the link. Oh, Frank, are you being of Jeremy right now? I'm don't just kidding, Jeremy. Don't start with me. I'm just kidding. Don't start with me. Because he, um, <laughs> yeah, let's try it. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. It going to work? I mean, it is, but, like, I can show you there's literally no live streams going on. I mean. Well, I see a red dot. So no, I'm wondering. That's not a red dot. All right, no, that's not where it is. It's, um, hold on, let me pull up the link. I'll tell you exactly where. So press pause on that. Listen, everyone, I told you, okay, it's at 1036. So gotcha. pull it up at 1036. Fucking fired, Frank. I'm cool you with that. Okay. Your time. Okay. Be a Dr. Seuss novel there. So this is your here, right? Okay. Tried to size it up so we could all see it. Still couldn't. Um, <laughs> this is all here. Okay. Yeah, man, this type of stuff with underage kids, man. It's a game of inches. In your case, a game of an inch, but. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? Like, so, this should, should, you can pull it down now. You can, uh, <laughs> you know, you can say <laughs> it's disgusting. It's not something you want to put. Man, little things like that, it's perfect. And, and I think I look at the comments and people that uh, are guests are getting used to your dad jokes, like your little subtle your subtle hints of uh, of dad jokery. I assume you're not a dad, uh, but oh man, uh, I got the body of one. I got the hairline of one. I'm just 22, <laughs> so. But you know, my girlfriend's gonna be watching this. So when you do, I mean, just get ready, baby. I mean, next year, next year. Oh my gosh, um, that was something else I was gonna say. It, when you watch two, I can't tell what when you're telling the truth and when you're not telling the truth because you've said you've told people you're 32. Um, you talked about getting a scar on your leg because I think you said some dude stabbed you or shot yes. you. Or something. So I, I, I could explain all of that. Okay. So <laughs> when I catch somebody close to my age, um, that is my age or maybe a year or two older, I tell them like, cause I look older. Right. So I tell them like, Hey man, no, I, I get you're only 22. They have no idea. I'm younger than them saying this, but I tell them I'm 32. Um, or something like that. Or I tell them, Hey man, you're young. You're only 22. I tell them that. So they, they think I'm like in a position of authority. some type of authority or yeah. some type of like, oh, okay, he understands me or, Oh, I'm in the clear. Let me just be honest with him. It's actually something behind it. And then funny, you brought up the scar one because uh, the predator, I got 130 years, uh, Matthew Eric's Eric Matthewson, Matthew Erickson, Matthew Erickson. I, I get it mixed up. So this scar right here, uh, well, I guess you can't see it, but, there's like two bite marks right here. So this was actually from, <laughs> we pulled up to this guy's house in San Diego, me and my friend CC unit. He has a rumble channel himself. And we, he, he was, he wasn't a predator. He was just kind of like a troll hater. So we just pulled up to his house and this was in 2020 <laughs> and I pinned him. Right. Cause he tried to come out swinging and I'm like, okay, I don't want to get in trouble. I just pinned him to the ground and he started biting my leg. So this, that's how it happened. So, <laughs> A few times I've, I've, I've showed him that scar. I've been like, hey, man, look, I got caught texting a minor before, too. The dad <laughs> did this to me. Hey, man, it happens. All right. And that's that's what worked with that predator. And he ended up confessing to like child porn and all of this stuff after I said that. That's yeah. And that was something else I want to bring up. You, um, you know, I, I've watched a lot of cop shows and things like that. Your your interview technique. Are you 
are you just a natural? Like, how did you learn this, this approach again, trial and error, or are you just a conversationalist? Because you go in there and these guys just open up. They just tell you whatever they want. And sometimes I, I notice like your, your technique, you'll lead them back into like, um, the conversation where they want to go somewhere else. I mean, that's a, that's a talent that some people train their whole lives for. Well, I, I got to say, man, I mean, having people caught or having people arrested in 42 states. I mean, we deal with a lot of detectives and these detectives, um, you, you know, the police, I see a lot of comments like on Twitter or YouTube, whatever, like, oh, you're doing what the cops aren't doing. You're doing what the cops won't do. No, no, they will do it. And they have their hands tied. Um, all the detectives, well, I should say most of the detectives, like over 90 percent of them that we've dealt with are all very passionate about getting these sick fucks off the street and um they're happy to they're happy to help like so when they watch my videos they tell me like hey instead of this you could have said this or you should have started with this like oh, okay. when, when you listen to people that are better than you at something you just shut up and listen and um yeah and then of course like you, you know, just because they're telling me all this stuff, you have to be still good at it and understand and like process what they're saying. But they've definitely guided me on how to basically how to do it. And I've kind of taken that and morphed it into something that works for me. And uh, yeah, so big shout out to them for doing it. Then, of course, like doing it since 2019. I mean, you, you eventually get better at it and you kind of just just realize like um, – like, I mean, this this predator we caught in Oregon, uh, he was a sex offender. He had the, he, we caught him at his job at this uh, corp at this mechanic shop that he owned. And he just started he was so honest about everything. And th that day I realized the less you call him sick and the less you berate them, the more they'll tell you. Because after he admitted to molesting all of these people, I, I was like, dude, you are one of the sickest people we've talked to. He's like, why would you tell me that? I just told you I was just being honest. And I'm like, you know, oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. And then that switched something in my mind to be like, hold on a second. Just don't berate them. Then, you know, kind of polishing that up and, you know, turning it into where you can just extract shit out of them. Yeah, I think your earlier videos was more like, um, uh, what do they call it? The, the, yeah, you, you kind of. If I remember, like it was you and a bunch of other, it looked like football players just surrounding the dude <laughs> and being like, what are you doing here? Uh, where are those videos still up? I, I couldn't find them for doing some research of this interview. I, I looked around, I couldn't find any of them. Oh my gosh, man. I mean, I think we have like five of them on locals or something, but okay. there's so much lost footage due to YouTube, just wiping it out and it, it, it sucks, but slowly That's but rough. surely we're going to get them all up on rumble, but you know, there's just a ton of crap to post in the only one channel. Sure. Yeah. Does, does this affect you at all? Do you find yourself getting jaded? Because I, I work with some CPS people, and that's Child Protective Services, and mm -hmm. um, they are all kind of, they got dark humor, one thing, and yeah. they all have just almost PTSD from dealing with this stuff all the time, maybe just full-fledged PTSD. Are you dealing with any of that, or how do you, how do you I guess, rinse yourself of it when you're done a case? Yeah, so I'll say we definitely, there's definitely a lot of dark humor going around, like, People in the comments that, you know, they kind of say like, oh, Alex, you're so fucked up for saying that. I'm like, dude, OK, like e even even like cops that deal with this stuff, they have the same dark humor. Like we were talking about um, at, like before trial in Pennsylvania, me, me and the cop that was on the case, we were talking about like the messages the predator sent. And, you know, he sent he sent nudes of his wife who is just completely fat, like just disgusting. Like, <laughs> that's traumatizing right there. Sure. And he also sent a lot of, he also sent a lot of CP and I'm like, I went to the cop like, yeah, when I saw his wife naked, I, I should have like just begged the predator to send more CP because the wife was so unsettling. I'd rather see that, you know? <laughs> and like and, and the cop like laughing, like, that's, a, that's the type of humor that goes around. But yeah. of course, like we're not asking for any of that crap to be sent, but like, you know, just as, you know what I mean? But like, yeah, so we definitely have that dark humor and we joke about really fucked up shit. But, um, yeah, but as for the trauma, tr being traumatized, I mean, I've always had thick skin and stuff. Like I played football my whole life and I was one of the few white kids in my high school. So, um, you know, not in a malicious way, but I was insulted a lot, um, you know, cause we busted each other's balls. So I would like sling it back at them. They would sling it at me. And I think that really helps with doing this because, um, you can take what these predators are saying and just realize like, okay, their words, just do your job, just do it you know what i mean it, it so yeah. it really it really doesn't affect me and um at first i would say the dick pics were unsettling but now i'm, I'm pretty numb to them 
Um, the, the thing <laughs> you that really see dicks <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Go to bite into your foot long hot dog. You're like, I'm just sorry. I'm thinking about work. <laughs> oh yeah. But I'd say, I mean, when the Preds send like that crap, like CP, the first time it got sent, that shit was. I, I got infuriated, and I wanted to sure, throw yeah. the editor off the balcony um, at the mall. But I mean, luckily, luckily, we can extract they have it out of them without you know them having to send it. Like we can just kind of tell like with who they're following on Instagram and stuff like that. And you know, so not too many times that we come across it. Luckily, but um, other than that, man, there's not really. I don't know. There's not, I don't know. The thing that worries me the most, honestly, is YouTube censorship. I mean, we, we have yeah. this great movement going on. They could just nuke it in a second. That That's, that's fucking stressful. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. Especially like we talked to the very beginning, you know, if you're not working, someone most likely is, is pre why can't I think of the word for that? Pre predatoring going after Praying? exploiting. Praying on. There you go. Hey, <laughs> I got a big brain sometimes. Uh, someone's preying on a, a, a child at that point. Yeah. Um, how about this? Uh, cause uh, I, I watch a lot of these. And like I said, there's a few other channels. Um, oh, and a, a side note there, it's probably best you're not a dad. Cause I think not that, that it's not going to affect you, but when you become a dad, especially if a daughter, something clicks in your brain yeah. and it, it's your, your tolerance for really, I, I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't be, and maybe I, I don't want to be that guy that, you know, the ones that say I couldn't go to boot camp because I would punch the drill instructor, those <laughs> douchebags. But I really, if I was in a room or in a car or standing next to someone that was trying to hurt a little girl, I, I it would be very difficult yeah, not that's, to. That's the day you go to jail. Yeah. That's the day you're going to prison. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe it's, it's, it's best you don't have kids right now because I don't know, there might be whatever that evolutionary kill people that hurt kids, uh, whatever that is that clicks in your brain, maybe it hasn't fired off yet. Or maybe you, it takes a lot of, of restraint. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, um, when I walk through Walmart, every time I see someone now, anyone, I'm like, holy shit, that looks like one of the predators. I'm like, that guy right there, he's here to meet someone. And I'm like, ah, get out of my head. My wife too. She's like, okay, Kevin. And I'm like, no, seriously, that's exactly what they look like. Have you found like a common thread among these guys or do they just look like everyone? Because the idea of a, a child predator, we think of like Chester the molester or some greasy dude or whatever, but. Yeah. Wearing it, a trench coat. You yeah. Know, yeah. Do, you, do you have a, a bill for these guys or oh, is it really man. just anyone? It really could be everyone. I mean, this is something that has no race, class, color, nothing attached to it um but yeah i mean we we definitely joke around like when we don't see the predator or the predator flakes we just like we just kind of look around and we're like why don't I just confront that guy and say he's the predator he kind of looks like one <laughs> <laughs> we haven't done that before. it would be funny but, oh my god that would be awful <laughs> yeah i mean they have i mean the the consistent thing about them is yeah they 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 are like most of the people we talk to are middle-aged white men and yeah. yeah. Hate white people. The, um, oh, don't, don't, don't start. <laughs> we got it. We were talking about this before we have a great video. Maybe we'll watch it a little later on a uh, bunch of white people hating themselves for no reason at all. For no reason. That's oh, what so happens. Annoying. I hate that uh, shit. Today's day and age. Um, how about the dangers? Like, uh, the, the child predator patrol child, Colorado pred, uh, whatever they are, CPP, uh, those guys wear, uh, bulletproof vests and stuff when they go out, you're reaching some, some criminals that are really like you're, when you show up, they must know that it's over. Like their job is over. They might be going back to jail if they've done this before, whatever. Are you worried that one of these guys is just going to try to pull a gun or fight you or go out, you know, go out well, in a blaze of glory? Uh yeah, that's that's what happened in Oregon um, in late December. Uh, we did have a predator pull a gun. He didn't point it at us, but he pulled the gun out and pointed it. This subscriber kind of stream sniped the catch, and the predator was so crazy. Like he had his hand on the on he had his uh, hand like on the holster, and he he like basically pinned my friend against the wall. And was like, "Holy shit! Just stop! Stop! Stop!" and whatever. So then the predator just gets angry and walks off. Then he comes back around. And we're like, holy shit. And he's like, you know what? I'm sorry for acting like that. We can talk. Then the subscriber's just there. And he's he's like, you sick fuck. And I'm like, oh, my God. Ugh. And then the predator literally hits his head. He's like, oh. And then he just points again at the subscriber. And Ugh. oh, my God. It was 
that shit right there was insane, man. I mean, that predator is such a pussy, but you know, he he you know he needed he needed the gun for one reason. Um, you know, he, he's just a scumbag, so he had to carry a gun to get talked to by you know predator casters. Bitch. Yeah, he, here's the thing. Uh, uh, public service announcement, all compound listeners. If someone has a gun, get the fuck away. Shut up. There's first of all, no shut reason. Up. Yeah, there's because that means they're going to use it. Even if they're not going to use it, do you want to take that chance? Well, there's a one in 10 chance he's going to put a bullet in my gut. Uh, and, and if you know he's got a gun, guess what? He got the drop on you. There's yeah. only about a half a second that you have to pull your gun if you're carrying. And, and neutralize the threat, and that's probably not going to happen if a dude yeah. already shows I, that he's got a gun. I have no idea why he called him a sick fuck. I mean, did anybody <sighs> in Columbine, like, open one of the doors in the hallway and go, hey, Klebold, fuck you, and then, you know, Cle yeah. just come and dude, no, that's, that's fucking never do that shit. Well, that, that we watched a video last week where these people, it was in, I think, Scranton, they're, they're yelling at their neighbor who's got a gun pointed at them. Then he starts shooting, and they're still yelling. Still yelling. Like, you idiot, what are you? And then they both get that get killed. It's like, what's your, well, that, was, that was the, in the snow, right? I think I've seen that. Video. Yeah. 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 That was yeah. easily, that was one of the most disturbing things well, I ever saw. I don't but, think people understand oh, yeah. too. And again, this is to our listeners. Like if someone pulls a gun, it's one of two, one of two things has, has already happened. One, they're extremely scared. And two, there's certain times in your life where you just kind of reach, like when things got to go like over a cliff, like this, you've gone past the point of no return. Yeah. Like, the gun is out now. Yeah. So it's one of those, well, now what? Like the gun's out. Like it's it's there. If someone pulls a gun, that means they're they're going to the mattresses. Okay, gunfight's on. And now it, it, that's your choice at that point. Like what do I do? Is this person just threatening? But if someone pulls a gun, you are in your right to shoot them. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, you got to be prepared for those consequences. Anyways, yeah. I mean, to me, it seems like this is a super super dangerous situation although you've done a lot and really only have one situation like that so yeah i guess that's yeah. a good thing right <laughs> yeah know. no it is there, there was another situation in colorado where the predator's brother he was holding a gun not in his holster but in his hand the whole time he wasn't pointing it at me but he's like you put that camera in his face i'll blow the camera off and i was they were nuts Ugh. but yeah yeah besides those two times nothing like that and and i think with the whole back of them in the corner thing I think, man, it, you got to try your best to reassure. I'm like, oh, no, man, I'm just here to talk to you. Oh, just minimize what they do. Oh, it's not a big deal. Oh, you got sucked into this stuff. Oh, and, you know, oh, you got to be as a kid. This is why this is happening. You know, when you take the blame off them, uh, they have a sense of relief. And, like, if you, if you look at the video, <clears throat> it's on Locals right now, but it'll be on Rumble soon. If you look at the video of the guy in the infant porn confronted at work um, who was into the doggies who lured the live decoy, he was so scared when we went up to him because he's been to jail. He's been on the run from the sex offender registry to Arkansas for five years. When I told him, oh, it's no big deal. He's like, oh, like he literally is like, okay, okay, okay. Like just wow. dropping lines like that, it'll just turn them because they're so, yeah, they're all manipulative, but they're so vulnerable at the same time because they're, they're back against the corner. So they'd, they'd latch onto any, any sliver of hope you give them. And when you're like, Oh, no, man, I don't, I don't think you need any trouble. Maybe just some help. Okay, yeah, 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 help, help. Anyway, this is where I get my CP from. You know what I mean? Like, it, it burns like that. How do you shake hands with him without throwing up? <laughs> I would just, like, I would I would have to do this, like. Uh, Ugh, I mean. I don't know. <laughs> you I could know, ask like the predators. One ready. How do you shake hands with someone who scratches their ass and doesn't wash their hands? Sorry. Can ask them. Yeah, that. yeah. Well, the yeah. thing, and we'll, so we had a. Going like earlier, like earlier this week, we had a had a conversation with one of our viewers, Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Um, where she says, "Well, why would they bring a gun? Like, why would they bring a gun? It doesn't make any sense, you know." That, you know, and I was like, "Well, when you're in, when you're doing this, and when you're in this, you're at your literal last straw. You are going to lose." I don't think there's anything everything. worse, like yeah. a bank robber. Yeah, you're going to lose fine. everything. Everything, everything is gone because yeah. everything is out there. Everybody knows who and what you really are. Yep. So it's kind of one of those family's gone, well, friends it, are gone. It can't get any worse. So, you know, let's bring out, you know, Mr. Pew Pew. I mean, so it's the danger element is always going to be there because they know as sick as this is, they know, one, they know it's wrong. Two, they know it's sick. So now in their head, it's like, why not? Like yeah. it's, it's, well, it's the ultimate, you know, things. So. I think it was um, the Chris Hansen, whatever that was called, uh, Catcher Predator. Catch Predator. One of their dudes, he held, he holed himself up in a house and ended up shooting himself. Yeah. 
which yeah, the, that was the end. I mean, there was nothing else for him. That was the end. Yeah, if that's what you want to do, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> yeah, we, we've had a we've had a predator off himself before. Um, it was a guy in Fenton, Fenton Missouri. Uh, his name was Richard Wood, and he basically like he had a good life going for him. He wasn't, he wasn't like the guy in the trailer park. Who's like, Oh, I'm on disability. Okay. You know what I mean? This is like, this is the guy who living in a nice suburban home has a pool in his backyard and has a girlfriend, whatever he, so between him and the decoy, he was so deep into CP. Like basically he sent the decoy an image of some disgusting shit. And the image on top showed basically like some number out of 15,000. So, oh. so that showed us that he was trading with somebody on Telegram and there was 15,000 photos between them exchanged of, we can all assume what. Yeah. So um, basically we weren't able to confront him for a few months. Like I got around to getting him because I said the decoy, hey, do you still have this guy? And he's like, yep. So Richard hadn't texted us for a few months, right? Like he was kind of done with Telegram, whatever. But um, we knocked on his door. He answered, or we, we caught him actually when he came into his driveway from work and he knew what we were talking about. And so basically he was a boomer. Like, I guess he was too dumb to wipe anything from his telegram because, yeah, he, he like just had all this shit just still sitting on his telegram. And he basically was like, he confessed to trading 15,000 images with, whoever the guy was that was trading it with him. And he admitted that some were saved on his tablet. Like, and this wasn't just his own tablet. This was the tablet his work gave him. Um, oh, yeah. And it was on it, on his tablet, on his work computer. So basically, and this, if you just type in predator poachers, Fenton, F E N T O N on uh, rumble, you'll see the video because YouTube took it down scumbags. But, um, yeah, so he confesses to all of this, and he's just like, oh, God. I, I didn't have the vibe that he was going to commit suicide. He just kind of seemed like – I mean, he was very distraught. But, you know, so the next day we get in touch with, like, some type of federal agency because, you know, it was, like, St. Louis County or something or the county next to St. Louis, and they were just – didn't do shit about it. So they put us in some type of – with some type of federal agency, and I told him, like, hey, man, so this guy, he was in some group chat or some group exchanging all of these images. He admitted to it. And they're like, all right, got it, got it, got it. And then the next day, like, I follow up with them and I got no response. And then, like, out of nowhere, somebody links me um, that basically his high school reunion group, whatever, Richard's high school reunion group was like, we lost another one of ours today, Richard Wood. And it showed his picture from high school and he was gone. He killed himself. Wow. Uh, Wouldn't shed a tear. Gonna tell no, you the truth no, with that was, one. It was still pretty heavy. It was still pretty heavy to comprehend because, like, oh sure, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. I could see that one. Um, we had a, a situation here in North Carolina. Play um, link to check this out, and then my my follow up question after we watch this video is is really how local police and 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 all that how they interact with you. And it sounded like you said you have a good experience, but yeah, check this mm-hmm. out. Ohio and one from North Carolina oh, lured another man to the target at Haynes Mall last Tuesday. Now, interestingly enough, these group of men are involved with a group called Dads Against Predators. And this whole incident ended up leading to a fight and then a shooting. And now Winston-Salem police have a message for those residents trying to take on incidents like these. I heard a, a basketball ball drop. So I thought it was college kids that were playing around. Jason Vett is a former security specialist at Target. Uh, he says he was in the vacuum area when the shooting happened. Jason, they got a gun, 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 gun. He just kept mentioning that. And then I saw people start running. So I started running. Winston-Salem police say 28-year-old Jay Cameron Carnicom of Ohio, 29-year-old Joshua Mundy of Ohio, and 37-year-old Jason Chips of Marion, North Carolina, entered the Target last Tuesday night to approach a victim they met through the social media app Meetup. Child sex predators are lured by people pretending to be juveniles and are later exposed (laughs) either in personal confrontation or on social media. Okay, the you can take it down. So there's a couple things here. Apps. Um, they are, I mean, it sounds like they're a bunch of dumbasses. They they didn't really play their cards right there. You don't fight a guy with a gun. 
Um, yeah. But in the, in the same thing, it, it makes you guys look bad that do this. And the third thing is the, the press there didn't sound like they were impressed with these dudes trying to take out a, a child molester. They're the Lord and the, the chief of police there. So I guess that's three things in one. Um, has the media, has anyone like that come after you trying to make it like you guys are the bad guys? Um, kind of like when we first started in 2019, like, yeah, because we kind of did it like how they do it. But <clears throat> honestly, now, I mean, when you catch an elementary school worker in Oklahoma with infant porn on his laptop, I don't think the media can really spin that in a bad way unless they want their careers to be over. So, sure, I mean, they yeah. covered us pretty fairly. But yeah, no, it's 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 not a lie when stuff like that happens. It could make all of us look bad. It just is what it is. Um, yeah. Because we did a catch 20 minutes from Winston-Salem. We caught a very sick fuck. Um, oh. What oh, city no. was it? I think oh, Lexington, North Carolina. And – the when the when the detective there when he heard the call like oh this group is posing as minors he was just like oh crap like he was expecting the worst but when he saw that basically the video and saw what we were and what we were about he's like it was such a big relief because you know Winston Salem's what twenty minutes away from there so it's like so they, they, I mean they know about it they they know what goes on they you know they stay in the loop about the DAF situation so yeah I mean one bad one bad experience could truly ruin a whole jurisdiction for somebody, um, for somebody sure. else. And, you know, that's why I like, you know, player, player shit, right? Like it's, yeah. it's not hard to do, do it right. How do, how do like the local police and kind of the, the, you know, if you, if you're in a small town and just some, like the guy I described earlier, he's been doing this for 20 years. Uh, he comes up on this scene where there's, <laughs> there's some, I assume you're six, four, six, five. Six, four, but, yeah. Okay. Dude standing over a, a creep. Uh, now he's like, God damn it. I got to approach this situation. Are, are they all cool? Or have you, have you generally had a warm reception from the police when you, when you kind of spring this on them? Yeah. Yeah. It, it usually is a warm reception. There's always the, you should have told us beforehand or why didn't you contact us? But um, when we go to an area for the second time, that's what we always do. Like we, like, for example, Amarillo, Texas, we have four arrests there at this point. And starting from, well, I guess starting from the third arrest, you know, that's when we like said, hey, man, we're going to be in the area. Like at this point, I have the, I have the sergeant, uh, sergeant's number. And, you know, we're not like homies or anything, but we're like, I could say we're definitely acquaintances for sure. And like he keeps me updated on the cases and whatnot. And then we go to like Huntsville, Alabama. We have five arrests there. And I have like the investigator's email and I just say, hey, man, we're going to be in this area. And he's like, OK, I'll have a cop ready. Like, so <laughs> we keep going to an area like that, that's always good. And, you know, you build allies in that in those places. But yeah, no, for the most part, they're very receptive to what we do and uh, they do try their best. Cool. So what's what what's your future plan with predator poachers or, or um, yeah, like, are you going to expand this thing? How, where are you going to go with it? Man, it's, you know, we've had good success, but it's been hard to expand fully, like, you know, have people sitting in a room all day decoying, like paying them to do that when YouTube removes us every couple of months because, you know, YouTube has just stunted our growth so much. But I think with locals and Rumble, um, yeah, it's it's not it's not like super crazy like YouTube, but, you know. Every subscriber you get on Locals, every subscriber you get on Rumble, that's just plus one, plus one, plus one. There's never going to be a day where all of that, you know, they, they pull the brick and it all comes crashing down. You know what I mean? So sure. it's kind of easier to plan when we're building that stuff up. But as for my plans, I don't know, man. I, I, I take take everything by day. Like I do plan trips um, and people that we're going to get. But day by I take everything day by day, like a beautiful picture is painted with one stroke at a time. That's that's the way I look at things. And um, I just know some capacity, whether it's running for office, being a cop, um, continuing to do this. I just want to make sure pedophiles stay away from children. And that's my life's mission at this point, because I see how big of a problem this is. And man, when you're catching people into fucking infants, there's no going back. So, yeah, that's that's uh, that's one of those. I can see a lot, but I wouldn't even be able to look look at it. Oh, that was going to be a question. If someone sends you uh, one of these guys, so you're a decoy and someone's sending you child pornography. I didn't like at receiving that. Doesn't it make you guilty of receiving child? Like, how do you get around that? Well, if you get like, like, okay. So say like someone random just spams it to your phone. Um, yeah. you just got to go turn it in. So okay. like, you know, if you're not asking for it, saving it or soliciting it in any way, um, as of like, you know, that's always been, um, 
cool with whatever cops we deal with. And I just like, for example, we were in Ulster County, New York and uh, beginning of February. And I just called the detective there. Cause we, we caught a guy there. Um, he got indicted for 20 counts of CP. Um, we caught him in November. He just got indicted like literally the same day we were up there in February, which is coincidental. But um, I just told the detective like, Hey, we got this guy in Ulster County and he did send me this. And he's like, okay, he like, you know, when you let him know that you got sent in this and obviously they see you didn't ask for it. Um, we've always been good with that. Yeah. And like, yeah, we just have to make sure we always turn that in, always don't save it. And we always never ask for it. Like, for example, when the predators offer it, we're like, um, just tell me what you're going to send, but don't send it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if they, if we get them to say what they have without them sending it, that's, ideal and when they do spam it i mean yeah we just have to go turn it in and obviously we can always show like it never did we ask for it sure the um the wokesters have gone after you a few times too oh uh, yeah uh i mean that's got to be frustrating because if you google it's like uh alex rosen's a misogynist a homophobe uh whatever list they can come up with and i mean <laughs> I don't know. It is what it is. How, how do you take that and, and f I guess, fight against it? I just think it's funny. I always ask them to call in on a stream, like when they say that, because it's so funny because so once in a while we get them on the phone and they get like picked apart. It's just so great. But I don't really know. I, I, don't, I don't really say much to it. They're just pussies. I don't, I don't know how else to put it. And <laughs> yeah. I just no. don't ever apologize to these people. I see how ruthless these people truly are. And I noticed that the people who hate me are basically people like the cancel mob and yeah. dark web pedo forums. So I think they need to look in the mirror. Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> right. Who cares? <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. Um, you said you do a live stream. Do you do a podcast or anything like that? Or, or uh, no, I don't have the time, man. I'm like, I'm everywhere. Yeah, I guess, that would, guess that would make sense. Yeah. Um, how can folks find your, your locals? Oh man. Well, <laughs> they can just go to rumble. Um, okay. predator poachers on rumble and mm -hmm. Hey man, like if we have everybody's eyes, you know, we don't really need the wallets, but you know yeah. with, with what YouTube is doing, but you know, if you do want to support us on locals, you know, you can ask me how to do that when you're on one of our rumble streams or something like that. So just, if y'all follow us on rumble predator poachers, rumble.com completely free to make an account. If you haven't already, um, just follow us on there, spread our videos and the rest will take care of itself. Yeah, that'll be awesome. And like you said, I, I don't remember, I think it was like 50 bucks. Um, and if you consider that over a year, it's not yeah, much helps. at all. Yeah, and you can yeah. consider what the 50 bucks is going to, what it's going yeah, yeah. to do. So. Oh, I Plus, can assure you that it only goes to traveling and it goes to me eating a lot of food. Like I can show you all my apartment right now. It is, <laughs> there's nothing on the wall. I don't, I put everything I have into caching pedophiles and uh, it's super appreciated y'all supporting. That's awesome, man. Well, thanks for coming on, brother. Um, do you have any? I didn't. Do you have any questions? Sorry, I, no. I mean, everything's pretty. It's pretty. You laid everything out pretty good. Like my only question was what, like I said, what Heidi was talking about as far as like the violence portion of it. Like, yeah, you, yeah, stay safe. <laughs> yeah, that's that's because yeah. I can imagine. Like, because again, the whole back into a corner deal. Like, you literally have nothing left. Like, there's nothing. That's that's it. Yeah, yeah. You lose everything. Absolutely. Well, that's just that's. It's what they choose, I guess. Yeah. They they just can't. I, mean, I, don't, be like, I don't have any sympathy. It's got to be I, like I an addiction or I don't know. I don't know how anyone could be like, okay, let me think of the consequence. Okay, that, I'm good with that. I'm good with losing everything that Literally could possibly, everything. yeah, to, uh, to go after this kid. Oh, it's know. it's it's crazy. They just throw. Okay, I'll tell you all this before I dip. Yeah. Um, we caught this guy a few days ago in Cedar Park, Texas. Um, this is a guy we have not turned in yet because. Guess what he did after we confronted him? Um, message the decoy again. Oh my the god. The same decoy account. So we're kind of just we're kind of just kind of gauging, see if we can get him again, and just kind of gathering everything we can on this guy. But you know, if nothing, if something if it doesn't fall through by the end of this month, we'll just send it over. But um, yeah, no, this guy's sick, and it has not been the first time. I think at this point we've caught two people that have not only been caught by us before, but been on bail after they've been arrested and they messaged one of our decoys again. It's fucking insane. Oh my insane. God. Yeah. Guess, well, like well, I said, he's given the recipe and he's, he's still yeah. able. That's how, that's the sickness, man. Well, yeah, um, it is. It is. It, every single guy that you bust is always like, 
I've never done this before. I've never done this before. Uh, how many of them do you think have absolutely done this before? And not only that, have, have physically been with a child? Well, I would say a lot of the people we catch have said like, yeah, I've messaged kids before. I've looked at all the CP before. I think a lot do admit to that. Um, yeah. But as for being with kids, that's a very few admit to that. And the amount of people that I think have been with kids, north of 50% that we've caught. There are Holy some people shit. like – there are some people like the, the video you played in North Carolina earlier that, yeah, okay. Do I think that dipshit has molested a kid? No. Do I think he solicited news from kids before? Yeah, he said he did. Um, but we had another one in North Carolina before that video in uh, Curry, NC, which is Pender County, very small county. That guy was a photographer who has been watching child porn, he said, for 20 years and he Jesus. he basically kind of loosely admitted to being in a ring with other photographers, basically dishing out CP. And <clears throat> yeah, I think that guy's done some horrific shit before. And the thing is, it's like what they admit to, like, yeah, y'all say like I get a lot out of them. Probably, but they never admit to everything, you know? So if they're yeah. admitting to infant shit, then what they're not admitting to is – it, I don't even know. I, I couldn't even probably comprehend that right now. I know that when you're talking about too, cause he, he fit like all the creepy bill. He even had like a, a weird shed where he, he <laughs> yeah. did all his stuff. I'm like, God damn, dude, you couldn't write a character like that. No, it was uh, really Christ. insane. Oh, it, it's I'm pissed that they're, I'm, I'm glad that you're catching them in North Carolina, but I'm pissed that they're here. But like we said at the beginning, they're everywhere. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I, th there needs to be more. Do, do the police do their, Fair share. And I, I assume too, that like, they can't, they can't possibly, if they're, if you're getting this many people to bite on your decoys, you would need a hundred officers, maybe more in these large cities to just constantly go after these dudes until, until it became such a, every single person that you go after is obviously a decoy that they'll stop doing it. But I don't know. Do you, do you know of any, any law enforcement, like, like units and and how did that, how does that work? Yeah, they, they do do their stings like a couple times a year. See? But like, yeah, no, this detective in Oregon and he's in like the liberal Pacific Northwest part of Oregon, like the Portland area. He's not in Portland, but he's in a city near Portland. Awesome, awesome dude, super based. But he tried to basically get his PD to do more of these stings. And they're like, oh, we don't have the funding for it. Oh, no, we can't like. No, the detectives want to, and I guarantee you, they could. They would be doing this <clears throat> all day if they had, if their, if their hands weren't tied. But no, it's it's bureaucracy that prevents this from happening, and it, it's not the cops or detectives' fault. I think it's a little deeper than that, honestly, because when you think about, you know, the person that didn't hang themselves, like there's a lot of people. That, like again, I think that's why, and again, this is me putting my tinfoil hat on. I think that's why they want to normalize this crud because they know deep down that the majority of them are involved in this crud. So yeah. they want to take it and like say, Oh, well it's not that bad because right. they know the majority of their buddies to the left, and to the right are doing it. Did you see oh, my beer yeah. totally just explode on my face? I just got <laughs> beer bukkakeed. I'm so mad. Like, I, I didn't was, shake that thing up. Why the hell did I was just trying to keep it going because I kind of no, saw it okay. in the corner of my eyes. It's okay. So we, let the, we let all that out on this show. That sucks. <laughs> I'm kind of pissed. At least it didn't go on anything electronic. Um, but but yeah. that's, that's my, you know, tinfoil hat moment where I think it's, it's, I think that's outside of the budget thing mm -hmm. is because why would you not want to protect children? Oh, no, there's literally no reason why the budget isn't geared towards that. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, when you have when you have drag queens shaking their ass in front of kids, Ugh. then it's like, OK, but OK, well, I just got a massage from a 14 year old in Epstein's Island. What's the big deal? You know, I, I, yeah, I see it coming. You're right. And let me tell you, man, the detectives that we talk to, they they are not far off from what we think about that, too. Like literally the one in Virginia that presided over the case of the one that got 130 years. Yeah, he think he literally said what you said. He thinks they're trying to normalize it so the Epstein's list can be released. Hundred yeah. percent. That's crazy. Yeah. They they absolutely. I mean, when you see the the amount of videos, I mean, I, I always say it. Thank God for libs of TikTok. The amount of videos yeah. that go out there and show these these. I mean, 
Explain to me how you're not a sexual predator if you're in a thong and you're shaking your ass in front of a five-year-old. Like there's no, I just saw one like that today. This yeah. dude was doing some sort of weird handstand in a thong. And it's like, any other definition of that is you are yep. assaulting that child. Yep. Yet now it's okay because they're just expressing their gender. He's going to try to come. And what's, dog's what's, He's gonna try what's to crazy is like, if, if I went in front of even a bunch of high school kids and started just thrusting my hips, like I would yeah. be like escorted off the premises immediately. Rightfully right. so. But like, yeah, it's like, yeah, I, yeah, it's, 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 it's insane. It's mind numbing. And, and when you try to wrap your head around the craziness that we're seeing right now, it's like, uh, it, it, I think the whole point of it is to make us just so confused yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, just jaw dropping, uh, that, that, yeah, that it ends up just being normalized and it, and it better not. And I, I hope it's not. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't like the, I don't like the idea of a future where we're, you know, being a predator on a child is, is just another sexuality. It's I just think a lot of it's just so much pornography, like, Yes, I think, it's, I think it's so. I think pornography in general is so disgusting. Like, yeah. L luckily, yeah. Basically, I was able to snap out of it. Like, basically, beginning of 2019. Like, I just said, all right, I'm just going to stop watching porn, and I really stopped like in 2017. But I think the last time I watched a porn video was 2019. Like, because it was sparsely after 2017. I just, just snap out of watching porn, man. It's just so. It's so destructive. Like yeah. it, it just, it really, it really, it really does corrupt the mind. I'm not even talking about just with kids. It really corrupts. It really corrupts the mind with whoever watches it, you know, like much, and especially with kids that watch it, that's just terrible. And I think, uh, I don't know. I used to be like so libertarian about everything, but um, just seeing all this drag shit, it's really made me into, you know, probably a very uh, extreme person, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, it, 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 you have to fight fire with fire. Yeah, I, um, agree. I agree. If you stay away from porn, your sex life improves. You're, you, you just, oh, definitely. It, when you think about, and I think Gavin mentioned this, Gavin McInnes, when you're, if you're watching porn and you're just jerking off, you're literally the guy in the corner of a room while two yeah, people are fucking and you're going, oh yeah, dude, you're like, <laughs> like you're that creep. Cause what's the difference? I mean, you're just, I guess, separated <laughs> by a screen. You're looking yeah. in the window. You're looking in the window. <laughs> Eat her ass. Ugh, you're just fucking get over it, dude. Um, That's true. Yeah, man. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, we'll, have to have you on we'll have to have you on again someday and just kind of follow up, find out how things are going. Um, yeah. but yeah, maybe we can get some people to donate to, I know you, you were being kind by, you know, saying head over to rumble and do the free stuff, but come on guys, come on guys. You, you subscribe to compound. You can subscribe to locals, uh, get this guy some funding so, uh, he can travel around and, and do this stuff. Cool. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you coming on and keep up the good work. Yeah. You guys too. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. I'll let you awesome. know. Uh, yeah. If anything big comes up, I'll let you guys know. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I'd love it. All right. Cool, dude. All right, take it easy, bro. All right, take care. And did I fanboy out there? <laughs> listen, listen, if you are a guy that saves children, I will fanboy. It was like that time we we were, I don't know if you were there, Frank. Um, me and Jeremy did a, a show at this gun store that's owned by a, a Green Beret. And I showed up and, oh no, I'm sorry. I, we were there and all these Green Beret dudes from a motor, they're like a motorcycle Green Beret group show up. And I'm like, these guys are just fucking awesome. I walk yeah. up to them and I'm like, uh, gentlemen, I just want you to know I'm a big fan of your work. Uh, I enjoy what you do and uh, I hope you keep it up. They Jeremy laughed. did tell me about, about the, the, the fanboy moment you had. Listen, at least I'm not race. fanboying out like of, of actors or anything like that. But this dude, come on, man. He spends his life. He, his, his target are the scummiest people on earth and he takes them down. That's freaking awesome i'm it's jealous extremely awesome but what's sad about it is the fact that he himself is a target from people that's supposed to be helping him yeah yeah uh right at the end there my beer exploded and it really pissed me off because <laughs> i'm sitting in a pile of beer right now and i can smell it it smells like my college days uh can you smell that just a little bit i'm surprised my dog didn't come over and i, I stopped him oh, all right he's over there laying down there. So I guess we can uh, wrap this one up. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that show. Alex Rosen, um, go check him out on uh, Rumble. 
locals. Uh, just put predator poachers in and you'll find them. His, his, listen, I know it's gross, but he is really entertaining in what he does. Um, he's always wearing shorts and a t-shirt could be up in Maine in the middle of the winter. And he's just walking up, uh, like, you know, those dudes, I have a cousin that's like that. Always wear shorts. And well, it disarms like him because you know, it, it disarms. Yeah, you like, know, what the, is this six foot bearded lumberjack half naked coming on my front lawn? Yeah, what's, because, what's fun. You know that these dudes are so worked up, like they're frothing. They're like, I'm getting a 12 year old girl. And this is like, they are so psyched. And then this dude walks around the corner. You literally take a dude that's so keyed up and ready to go. And you completely flip it on his head. Yeah, just pull the rug out. I mean, I know. That's, and that's what it is. It, it's, it, I, for one, could, if I didn't have daughters, I could probably watch that all day. And just oh, watch yeah. that, watch that, watch. The, I have watch a daughter the, and I can watch, watch all the day. color, like leave their face. And they know at that moment, their life is 100% over. And it is. And it, that's, I think that's the payoff because every video you get a payoff, you're like, there's a scumbag. This dude uh, hits him up. And some of them are like, okay, can we, can we get on with this? And they're like, dude, you can, t you were about to ruin a 14 year old girl's life. You can sit here and talk to me for, for an hour. And sometimes he's like, look, I, I'm not going to do anything with this. And then when the interview's over, the cops roll up and then you're like, ah, there it is. Well, good. I mean, it's think about it too. It's like, Hey, you're, you know, you're lying. So why do I have to be truthful to you? And it's not like he's a part of a law enforcement entity where he has to, you know, be under the color of law. Yeah. He's, you know, you know, he's catching these, you know, these morons. Yeah. And, and putting them where they belong. Yeah. And they can't go like lawyer. They can't lawyer up while he's talking to him. No, no one ever would. Who would even think of that? So they just no. talk to him because he just disarms I mean, Well, I guess lawyers want money, so there will be lawyers. Or, but true. whatever. But my thing is, it's even with that, it's I I applaud one hundred percent what he's doing. Like I don't see anything wrong with what he's doing. Like it's it's helping. I just wish he had more help. Yeah, I wish there was one of these groups in every single town across the yep. country because they would be busy every single night. Yep. And and if these dudes keep getting taken down and taken down, it would it, look it. Uh, and he was right. So if if he nails someone as a decoy, think about how many kids are go, are getting uh, he's molested just, who he's aren't just one decoys. Guy. Yeah, he's just one guy. And then the fact that he's you know, and I and I knew. There were probably cases like he said, like, hey, you know, we caught this guy. And then while he's out on bail or parole, you know, he hit us up again, yeah. you know, in the same, you know, decoy. And it's like they they can't help it. They're deranged. They're sick. They're really sick. And it's just this this is a need. You know, it's 100 it's percent a need. All right. I'm sitting in, I feel like I'm sitting in my own filth. Uh, I feel like I'm sitting in my, my piss. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that was the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we had a lot of topics to go over uh, news wise. Uh, freaking Tar Tucker Carlson just released um, all the January 6th videos. Actually, I, I think it was McCarthy that gave it to him. We were going to go over that stuff. We will next week. It's going to be old news by then, but whatever. Oh, there'll I know, be more. He's releasing more. I know you guys want our tech. I know you sit there and you say, God, I can't wait for Friday to come so I can come by listening to these guys talk to me. <laughs> what, what did I say? I can't wait for Friday so I can find out their take on the Tucker Carlson tapes. And I know you do that, so don't worry. We will talk about it next week and probably whatever. Dude, the news cycle is like 15 minutes. So between now, actually, as we were doing this, we'll come, we'll, we'll check our phones and some big story will launch. And we do have a Twitter. That's so right. Hit us up At on Twitter. 21, you see it down. How do I do it? Um, yep. Oh, no, I'm behind oh, the... There. There it is. There, right? Follow us over there on Twitter, and you can argue with me like everyone else. No, you guys are fine. <laughs> nice people. Um, but that's all we have for you tonight. I will see you guys. We will see you guys next week. Take care.